Yeah, I think we just have to hope our opponent doesn't have Noxie and Guillotine. I think that's all there is to it. Choose the right time to strike. Center your spear. Yeah, because that is lethal there. Hey everyone, Raptor Spank here. Today we have another episode of On the Grind, the show where I cover a deck I'm playing in ranked. I'll break down the deck as well as a couple of flex spots and some basic mulligans. Then we'll put it through some ranked matchups and review how we do afterwards. This episode we'll be playing the new combo deck IT Diana Lee Sin. This deck revolves around turbo leveling Lee Sin and using him to wombo combo our opponent out, often with overwhelm off a of zenith blade. Let's start with the champion package. This starts with three copies of Diana, the two cost 2-2 two -two with quick attack. Nightfall, give me challenger this round. She levels up once you've activated Nightfall four plus times, and then she becomes a 3-3. Three -three. And whenever you trigger Nightfall or she gets Nightfall herself from playing her, she'll get plus two plus zero and challenger this round. Her champion spell is Pale Cascade, a two cost burst spell. Give an ally plus two plus one this round. And if you have Nightfall, draw a card. This is a really aggressive 2-drop, and she often functions as essentially spot removal since you play her with Nightfall and then you kill whatever she attacks, usually without losing her. And Quick Attack makes her a very safe attacker because of this. That's why you often can get that one-sided removal. And if you level her up, she can potentially be a pretty strong win con with Zenith Blade since all you have to do is trigger Nightfall once or twice off a of Pale Cascade, which is what our deck looks to do anyways, and suddenly she's got a massive amount of damage, and she's got a quick attack, so she should survive the attack as well. She just serves essentially as a second backup win con to Lee Sin. And she adds more copies of Pale Cascade to our deck, which is honestly one of the best cards in the deck, so that's just great in and of itself too. Then we have three copies of Lee Sin, the four cost three four. When you cast a spell, give me Challenger this round. If you cast another, give me Barrier this round. He levels up once you've cast eight plus spells in the game, and then he becomes a four five, and he dragon rages enemies that he challenges. His champion spell is Sonic Wave, a two cost burst spell, give an ally challenger this round, create a fleeting resonate strike resonating strike in hand. This is our primary win con and the focus of the deck. Our goal here is to cast as many spells as possible so that Lee Sin levels up and then we just start dragon raging things to deal a ton of damage. We have a lot of ways to pump Lee Sin so that the strike nexus off Dragon's Rage deals a ton of damage, but with three copies of Zenith Blade in our deck, we can often give him Overwhelm, and then if we get Lee Sin's power to 10, he just kills our opponent right then and there. He Dragon Rages, and even if he can't kill the creature, he'll bounce it to our opponent's hand and deal 10 damage to our opponent's Nexus, and then because of Overwhelm, he'll deal it again because there's nothing blocking him anymore. So this lets us steal a lot of games by just winning out of nowhere. And the fact that he gives himself Barrier makes it fairly easy to protect him, him whether we have uh, protection spells or not. We'd, any spell becomes a protection spell at that point. And his champion spell is just really great for leveling him up and setting up really good attacks for us since we can use it to give something challenger, but it gives us an extra spell as well, so it's two spells instead of one. And the extra spell is a one cost burst spell to give something plus two plus zero, which makes it way easier to combo kill our opponent with Lee Sin, because that's a massive damage pump for only one mana. So just every part of this is really great. And he can also often serve as safe removal like Diana, since he can usually give himself barrier. So he challenges things, kills it, doesn't take damage because of barrier. Obviously our opponent can do a number of things to make that not true, like dealing damage to him with like a, like a unspeakable horror, etc. So it's not always true, but often in case she can, or he can remove things pretty safely. Now let's go into the follower package. This starts with three copies of Gift Giver, a one cost one two. When summoned, create a gem in hand. This is an amazing turn one for a deck because she's got a decent body at one and two and comes with the, one of the best cards in the in the deck, to be quite honest. Gems are insane for what we want to do. It's a one cost burst spell that basically gives us a, a free spell to get towards leveling Lee Sin, but then it's, it's so good with Lee Sin. Because it's one mana burst spell, we can instantly give our Lee Sin Challenger, which allows us to Dragon Rage things, because if we can't give him Challenger, he won't Dragon Rage, and it permanently pumps his attack as well, so we're even closer to getting that combo win off of him, and if they've managed to deal damage to our Lee Sin, this also heals him, it does so many great things, and it's just a two for one, we play this creature, we get the creature, we also get the spell in hand. We can even use it to make our other creatures a lot stronger, because even using Gem on 
Gift Giver to make it a 2-2, and then also potentially enable Nightfall for our Diana, that can be a crazy powerful play for us. So this, this card is just an all-around great card. You will really feel the difference between a game where you start with Gift Giver in your hand and ones where you don't. It's, it's insane. Then we have three copies of Claws of the Dragon, a two cost three two. Summon me from hand if you've played two spells this round. Two or two more. Or more than two. Uh, this is just a great solid body at cost. Like a two mana three two is really good right there. But we can also easily cheat it in for free. Our deck's so good at doing that. We cast so many spells and for cheap. We can often get it for free. It can block fearsome, so that's really relevant into decks like Nightfall Aggro. And it still enters for free if it didn't start in our hand. So if we, like, Guiding Touch, Guiding Touch, draw two cards, and then we hit Claw of the Dragon on the last card, it'll enter into play for free. Even though it didn't see us cast the two spells, it just requires us to have cast the two spells. So this usually lets us build a board for cheap against aggro to buy us time and give us many blockers. So it's just an all-around great card in the deck. Then we have three copies of Eye of the Dragon. The two costs one three with a tune. Round start, summon a Dragonling if you cast two plus spells last round. This is great life gain against aggro, since we can usually get a Dragonling almost every turn when we attack and when we block, so that's really good for making sure that we don't get run over by aggro. And three health makes this just a great unit. Um, it's a great blocker, or you can even use it as a backup win condition with buffs like Zenith Blade and a couple gems. It'll start doing good damage. It'll be really hard for your opponent to kill it, so it'll often keep getting you Dragonlings turn after turn after turn, and it tune lets us play it while still building up mana for spell-heavy turns. Then we have 3 times Mentor of the Stones, 3 cost 1-1. One, one. Support, give an ally, plus 2, plus 2, and last breath, create 3 gems in hand. This is an absolute bomb in this deck. This card is insane because no matter what happens, this card is good for us. We don't even care. If our opponent kills it, if they don't, it does not matter. If he gets to attack with one of our win conditions, then that's insane. It gets leased in right off the bat to a 5-6. That becomes so problematic for our opponent. But if they kill it, Wow, great, we just got three one-cost spells in hand. We just talked about how great Gem was. Getting three of them, it's absolutely insane. It creates so many bad plays for our opponent that they just don't want to do anything. They don't want to block it, they don't want to kill it, like, <laughs> but, but they don't want it to live either because it's just going to keep building our units. It's just absolutely insane. Mentor of the Stones can be good in a number of decks, but this is the one deck where it's just insane. Absolutely incredible. And the buff it gives is permanent, so that just keeps getting our Lee Sin closer and closer to the ultimate combo kill. And it can be great with stuff like Diana or Eye of the Dragon too, to keep Eye of the Dragon alive, or make it so Diana is even more of a threat turn after turn. It's just, it's just insane. And then finally, we have three copies of Solari Priestess, a three cost one two, Daybreak, Invoke a four, five, or six cost Celestial card. This is a great all-around catch-all, um... Basically, you can find Comet for removal, Written in Stars to find a win con, or Sisters for aggro matchups, or other possible choices. There's lots of great things you could do with this. You can take the Warrior to help kill important units, or just have another big unit on board. It just, it's just all around great. It answers a lot of different problems we can be put into, and it can serve as a chump blocker too against aggro, so it's, it's not too bad on its own. It's, it's just a really, really good flexible card for what our deck wants to do. Now let's go into the spells package. This starts with three copies of Guiding Touch, two cost burst spell, heal an ally or your nexus two, draw one. This is a good boost against aggro for buying us time, giving us that little extra health gain. It can heal a win con like Lee Sin just to keep them alive against damage. And since it cantrips, it lets us combo off really well. Even if we're healing nothing, it's a two cost burst spell. It can turn on Challenger for Lee Sin while also drawing a card. So we just keep casting spells. It's just an all around solid card in the deck. Then we have three copies of Pale Cascade, two cost burst spell, give an ally plus two plus one this round, and Nightfall, draw one. It's a great value pump spell since it's two power for two mana, and it can be used really well to trigger Lee Sin to give them Challenger or Barrier. And since it it's very easy for us to trigger Nightfall, say like using Gem to turn on Challenger for Lee Sin, attack with them, then Pale Cascade, then we'll usually be able to draw a card off of it. 
It's also our only way to level up Diana, which is one of the weaker aspects of her in this deck, but since we do have many Pale Cascades, plus she creates more Pale, ca pale Cascades essentially by making redundant copies of her Pale Cascade, it's usually actually fairly easy to level Diana off this. Then we have one copy of Bastion. 3 cost burst spell, give an ally spell shield this round. This is just a catch-all for things that deal with Lee Sin. It's like, it, it can save him from Comet, it can save him from Dragon Rage, it can save him from just lots of different things. It can even save him from Hush if our opponent doesn't have enough mana to cast the second copy. Although we have to preempt it by using Bastion first. So it just often functions like a fourth deny and at a lower cost too. So if we don't have four mana and we only have three, we could still Bastion to save it from something like a Vengeance or Ruination. It's just a, a, good, a good flexible save that we just don't want to run the deck without. Then we have one copy of Hush, three cost burst spell, silence a unit this round, create a fleeting Hush in hand. This is just a great staple in the deck. You don't really want redundant copies of it, so like the one is fine, but it's a pretty good card for what our deck is trying to do. It can buy us the one turn we need to win often. Like Many games will end up being like, well, if we live through this round, we win the game next turn. And Hush can buy us that time by silencing the biggest threats. But, because it creates copies, it can also help us finishing, finish leveling up Lee Sin really easily, since we can hush, get another hush, hush again. If we have 9 mana, we can hush 3 times. It's just really easy to level up Lee, or even just to use it to trigger him to get the Dragon's Rage off. It just deals with major threats as well. Like opposing Lee Sins, this is phenomenal against. Hush is one of the cards we're going to be most scared of, so if we run into the mirror matchup, it's a bomb card to just blow out what our opponent's trying to do. Then we have three copies of Zenith Blade, the three cost slow spell, grant an ally plus one, plus two, and overwhelm. Daybreak, draw Zenith Blade. This is our wombo combo card, especially with Lee Sin. This makes it so Dragon Rage bounces their unit and then he deals his full damage a second time with this. And it's very easy for us to just use this as our first spell for the turn and get another one in hand so we keep our handful of spells. Um... We can use it with other things like Eye of the Dragon to keep it alive better, or Diana, so she can push through damage as well. It can basically turn any unit we have into a win condition. I mean, even with Claws of the Dragon now, it's a 4-4 with Overwhelm. That's really good, too. And because of the fact that it's drawing additional copies, it's keeping our hands full, and it's letting us do, like, Zenith Blade this turn to trigger Lee, then Zenith Blade again to trigger Lee on the following attack. You just want to make sure you always cast this, or as often as possible, cast it with Daybreak up so you can keep your hand full. Sometimes you'll want to cast that at the end of your opponent's turn so that you already have Overwhelm at the start of the next turn. You don't have to cast a slow spell, but generally speaking, you want to cast this with Daybreak if you can. Then we have three copies of Deny, four cost fast spell, stop a fast or slow spell, or a skill. This is just necessary protection for our combo game plan, whether stopping an opponent's combo or protecting Lee Sin. It, we just can't not run it. Since our deck is so linear with how it's trying to play and so revolving around Lee Sin, we have to have this to protect Lee Sin, and we have to have all three copies. There's just so many things our opponent can do to mess up our game plan that Deny saves us from. Then we have three copies of Deep Meditation, five cost burst spell, costs two less if you cast two plus spells last turn, draw two other spells. This keeps our hand full of Lee Sin helpful or relevant cards. It's so easy to get this at a discount too, so it just keeps filling our hand up and making sure that we can keep comboing every turn. It's just an all-around great, great card draw for the deck. Finally, we have two copies of Will of Ionia. Five cost fast spell, recall a unit. It's an extremely flexible catch-all. It can be used to save your own unit, not just bounce an opponent's unit. It's great against other Lee Sin decks. It's phenomenal in the mirror matchup, and that's one of the biggest reasons we're running it, because they can tackle Lee Sin, which will trigger Dragon's Rage against our Lee Sin, but if we bounce their Lee Sin, the Dragon's Rage doesn't go off, so they don't bounce our Lee Sin. Now they don't even have their Lee Sin, and any buffs they put on Lee Sin are now gone. It's just so good against that, and it can be used against any other deck to bounce a threat we're really, really scared of, or something like that, or worst case scenario, we can bounce our own Lee Sin just to keep them alive, though then it'll lose all the buffs, so it's just a good, good catch-all that's great into a lot of matchups. Now let's look at the flex spots. You don't really play around with the numbers here much, because the numbers are pretty tight where they're at. You don't really want to drop anything for something else out, out of there, like you don't want to really drop like a hush for the third Will of Ionia, but there are a number of changes you can make. 
First off, you can drop the three Dianas for three Terex, the four cost two four. Support, give me and my ally tough this round. And copy the last spell cast only on me this round onto that ally. He levels up once he's seen you target or support ally seven plus times, and then becomes a three five. And him and his supported ally can't take damage or die this round. His champion spell is Blessing of Targon, a 5 cost burst spell, grant an ally plus 3 plus 3. This just works really well with Lee Sin and can double a spell every turn, or well, every turn you attack. So he's just, he's, he's less of a threat as Diana is on his own, and he doesn't really work as spot removal like Diana does, but he makes Lee Sin way better since you can cast a buff spell on him, and then he'll give it to Lee Sin. And Lee Sin doesn't really care if you target him to get Challenger. It's just if you cast spells. You can cast a spell on, on Taric, buff Taric, then attack with Lee Sin, and then that buff will then go to Lee Sin as well. So it just it's really good for that. Blessing of Targon is really great since it's a permanent buff. And his level up really pinches your opponent's options since now you can't take damage or die. Then they really have to have like a bounce spell for Lee Sin or deny for his Dragon Rage, something like that. And he can make a win con out of two cards, essentially, with one spell. Since if you Zenith Blade him, he can then attack with something else, and it'll Zenith Blade that other thing. So, even without the Lee Sin, he does make Zenith Blade really, really, really powerful. Now let's look at some of the flexes we can make to improve our aggro matchup. We can drop 1-3 to three other units for 1-3 to three Spacey Sketchers. The one costs 1-1. One, one. Play, discard a card to invoke a 3 or less cost Celestial card. This boosts your number of turn 1 plays as long as you're not replacing gift givers with this. So that's really good against aggro because it makes sure you have something on turn 1 to block with if you need to. And invoke gives it great versatility since you can find stuff like the snake challenger against other decks where you have to kill something really quickly. Or you can find like equinox to silence a weirding stones which is great against ramp. The problem is it does not guarantee a spell like Gift Giver does, and this is why I prefer Gift Giver over Spacey Sketcher since it will guaranteed give you a spell. And its body is extremely weak since it's 1-1, one, one, so that means it dies to anything that attacks pretty much. And it does not generate cards like Gift Giver does, it just merely replaces a card that's in your hand with a new Celestial card of your choice from three options. So I don't like the RNG heavy aspect of it, I don't like that it's a weaker body, and I don't like that it doesn't increase your cards. That's why I prefer Gift Giver, but it's possible you could go down another unit to increase your number of one drops in addition to Gift Giver, and I think that's where it's best. Then you can also drop three units for three times Tasty Fae Folk, the three cost four two with Lifesteal. This is just great life gain against Burn or Aggro, since four power, that four life gain, that's a lot. That's really good, and he can block Fearsome, so that's even better. And you can essentially build your own Radiant Guard using stuff like Zenith Blade with him to just keep pumping him and making him better, or like Mentor of the Stones, and he really quickly becomes a huge life gain threat on his own. And then he can even serve as a win con, since even though he's not killing your opponent particularly quickly, if they can't kill him, he just keeps gaining your life while slowly chipping away at your opponent. So he can actually serve as a win con on his own. Or you can drop two of the two Will of Ionias for something like two, or or some something else, another spell, another unit, something like that, for two Spirits Refuge, the four cost burst spell, give an ally barrier and life steal this round. This can serve as protection, so even if you don't need the life gain, it can just save you from damage-based removal or from a challenger, etc. But this combined with like a massive Lee Sin is a crazy amount of life gain since we can often get Lee Sin to 10 power pretty easily even. Then this is 10 life you gain off this, so that's pretty crazy. The problem is at 4 costs, it's a bit expensive or hard to use, and we kind of need removal, that's why I prefer Will over it, but it's definitely an option if we're getting into a much heavier aggro meta, which I do think we are. Finally, let's look at some flex spots if you want to just all in the combo more. You can drop three units or some other card, but usually it'll end up being a unit you drop like Diana for three Behold the Infinites, the two cost burst spell, Invoke. It's another great two-cost spell that might find you another spell. It can also find you a random Celestial card that might just steal a game out of nowhere, like the Scourge or the Phoenix, something like that. But it's very RNG-heavy. It can invoke any Celestial card, so that's 22 possible outcomes. But it does generate you cards, essentially, since you cast this and get another card out of it. So that is pretty good for a Lee Sin deck. 
And again, at two cost burst speed, it's great for turning on our Lee Sin, giving him challengers so he can start dragon raging things. So it is a great card for that. I just don't like how RNG heavy it is, and that's why I prefer other options. You can also drop three units for three River Shapers. Three cost, two, two, strike, draw a spell. This unit refills our hand really good, especially if you can protect him or keep him alive through an attack. Then he can hit multiple times and draw you multiple spells, which is great for comboing off and, and powering up our Lee Sin and leveling him up. But he does die pretty easily, and that's the big problem is that at 2 2, he does die pretty easily and he can't block fearsome things, so that's pretty rough. But it is a good option if you're just trying to combo even faster or more reliably. Finally, you could drop the two Will of Ionias for two Concussive Palms, four cost Fast Spell, stun an enemy to summon a Tail of the Dragon. This is just flexible quote-unquote removal or a protection spell since you can stun a Challenger that's going to kill your Lee Sin. You can stun their biggest unit that's going to deal a bunch of damage to you. And since it comes with an extra unit and one that's strong, mind you, with 3-2 for board presence, that's also really, really good, especially against aggro decks, but just in general, that can be really good. And the fact that it's one cheaper than Will does make it even easier to cast this while leaving other things up or using multiple things a turn. It is worse against Lee Sin than Will of Ionia, though, since it doesn't stop the kick. It All it'll do is stun Lee Sin, so it does save you from half the Wombo combo if they have Overwhelm, but they're still going to kick whatever they challenged and kill or bounce it to hand, so it doesn't actually stop that, whereas Will of Ionia does. It's also worse protection, since you can't bounce your own unit with it, so that's why I generally prefer Will of Ionia over it, but there's definitely an argument for both. The The one mana cheaper is actually really, really powerful and really, really strong, so especially if you're not as scared of the mirror matchup, it can be a great include. Now let's talk about some mulligans. Generally speaking, you want to keep Lee Sin anytime you see him. You don't necessarily want to keep multiples of him, since while his champion spell is really, really good, that won't be until turn 4, turn 5, so you don't really want multiples of him, but if you see Lee Sin in your opening hand, you pretty much want to keep him every time. Or, or a Solari Priestess can work, so if you don't find Lee Sin in your opening hand, but you do find a Solari Priestess, you'll probably want to keep the Priestess, since she can find Written in Stars to find the Lee Sin. So she's pretty good to keep if you are missing the Lee Sin. Diana is also great against mid-range or ramp decks, where it can snipe a unit like Weirding Stones or just some powerful unit like Lucian, for example. So she's really great for those matchups. And you also want to usually have at least one two-cost spell, like either one, Guiding Touch, Pale Cascades. Since they're so important to comboing off, it can be a pretty important thing to keep, or at least a Zenith Blade something. You, you want at least one spell in your opening hand. Basically, you want to keep a Gift Giver anytime you find it, in any matchup. It doesn't really matter. It's just so amazing to have that turn one play it's just so good into so many different matchups that you almost always want to keep a gift giver when you find it you don't necessarily want to keep multiples of it but you want to keep at least the one just to have that great turn one play you also want to keep eye of the dragon against burn or aggro decks claw of the dragon also also great against nightfall aggro even when you're hard casting it for two mana because it can block fearsome and fearsome's really important in the nightfall matchup Deny is great against Control or Lee Sin decks. Your perfect hand is generally going to look like Gift Giver, a 2 cost, a Zenith Blade, and Lee Sin. That's like your ideal perfect hand into mat matchup not dependent. That's going to be your, your perfect hand. And that's the deck for this episode. You can find the deck code in the description below as well as a link to the Mobilitics page for it if you want to take it out for a spin yourself. Now let's jump into some ranked matches. All right. Game one here. Looks like some War Mother control. Um, the new Trundle Tridomere version of it. So there's going to be a lot of ramp. Diana can be pretty good here uh, if it catches them off guard. That said, I think we pitch this entire hand because we don't have any of our payoffs here. Alright, now we have payoffs at least. Only sad part is we can't actually trigger Nightfall Diana on turn three. Although we can't attack that turn anyway, so we're just kind of screwed. They're going to get their turn 4 trundle, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Uh, that's. I mean, that's a good card in this matchup, but we need to be the aggro deck, and that is just not happening right now. Alright, well, we'll just play Diana. Unlikely that we get punished for this. 
And yeah, she doesn't trigger Nightfall here, but we're not that worried about it. Since we wouldn't have been able to get to kill Weirding Stones in time with her regardless. That, however, is pretty strong. Um, yeah, we'll play Priestess, I guess. Uh, Falling Comet's good in this matchup. Just like it is in every matchup. Uh, yeah, I think we just swing here. Tempting to play Mentor of the Stones, because I could Mentor the Stones plus Pale Cascade. But, uh, I didn't expect my opponent to block, because there's too many things I could have done. Um, yeah, we'll play, uh, we'll play Mentor now, then. Is our opponent gonna kill him? Uh, that's awesome if he does. <laughs> We will take that. We want to level this Lee Sin up as fast as we can. And if he kills Mentor, then getting those gems will be pretty critical to doing so. Today we fight as one. Yeah. Throw, uh, throw the Priestess away. Not like we particularly care about her living. I think we just pass here. If our opponent's willing to ship the turn, we're okay with that. But if they play something big, we can get away with Lee Sin. Or we can just Comet. Avalanche. That's a little different. Mm. Okay. Alright. No, we'll, uh, hap we'll let it happen. Now we're gonna play Lee Sin. Beware the dragon spirit. Shouldn't be able to kill him? Not when we have Pale Cascade? Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll let that happen. I will not hold back. Conflict is all in the mind. Ying Yue, you've been in my thoughts. Only oh, you always did think too much. We'd prefer this because while I could kill both potentially by swinging, um. Any bit of damage will make it very hard to keep this Lee Sin alive through Avarosin. Eh, yeah, that's fine. We're not terribly concerned about that. Seems like he's thinking about some sort of removal. We're at least lucky that all he's found so far is Hearthguard. He's thinking about it. Ah! That was just a bad play. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't use it before the Weirding Stones dies. That's just weird. But, yeah. Good for us, I guess. Wouldn't have really, wouldn't have really mattered in the end, but... I just don't know why you would ever choose that order of operations. I think it's really worth worth casting spells here if we don't have to. I have a feeling my opponent has Trindomir. Hmm. That's unfortunate. You know, I suppose there's a non-zero points in which hushing there twice just to uh, get closer to leveling up Lee Sin's actually good. I'll see this will kill Weirding Stones again. I think we don't swing with her now. <laughs> I mean, punished if they avalanche, but... Now what's Lisa at? 5 of 8? We're getting there. Oh, did he learn? Uh Interesting. Okay. That one damage will not particularly matter. I cannot be sated. We'll probably will of Ionia that. Although it doesn't really matter, we're looking to combo kill, so it won't actually matter what our opponent's life total is at, potentially. Although, since we are so close to leveling him up, 
it might be worth uh, at least hushing it. Aberrations, stand together. Spring does not be winter. I think we're fine with this. Although maybe we do want to hush. Maybe the time has come for hushing. I mean, the real risky play is to block like this and double hush, or something like that. Because then we will kill Soul Gorger, Gorger, I believe. Double hush leaves us at six mana. Patience is underrated. Eh. Uh, it's not worth this it. I think we'll way. I think we'll we will hush at least the one. Hmm. But I think we want to keep a lot of mana open here. Conflict is all in the mind. The dragon spirit awakens. I suppose we should just silence our uh, dragons, our hushed our dragon's claw there. Um, we're really looking for Zenith Blade off the top here. If we find Zenith Blade, our opponent dies next turn. The trolls are going to war. Okay. Well, not many punishes if we will of Ionia. Um, do we actually just draw a card off Pale Cascade? As weird as that sounds. Well, that wasn't exactly what we wanted, but... Cycling our way somewhat closer to, uh, Zenith Blade. Okay, well, we will draw a card. I will not hold back. That's unfortunate. Strike firm. Center your spear. Yeah, I guess we just go for this. Kill him next turn. See what our opponent does here. Uh, wow. Well, he played that pretty well because he did layer it well. So if I do this, the barrier will stop one. Then it'll get hit by the next one, which will drop it to, let's see, five, then down to two. Which is what we are going to go for. See what we draw. Is all okay. I mean, we can't kill our opponent this turn regardless, so... Yeah, I mean, we're okay with that. Now the question is, can our opponent punish us? Um, well, you know. It's still gonna die. And our opponent is now empty-handed, so we are in great shape right now. Well, not empty-handed, but he's got Nightfall cards in hand, which we're not nearly as worried about that. So we will play Gift Giver. And then we will obliterate this Trundle. Okay. We are in okay shape right now. We are not in great shape, but we are in okay shape. And we will we heal him. These were from the himself. And we will play... Nothing. Because <laughs> we can will plus deny. Um, are we worried about that? 
kind of. We are kind of worried about Soul Gorger. Okay, well, we will. Will Vionia the Soul Gorger? That was definitely the best way he could have lined up attacks for us. Hmm. Now the problem is we don't actually have a way to trigger Challenger for him next turn. I fight with my spirit, not my fists. Our enemies would be foolish to underestimate. Breathe in, breathe out. I mean, we currently have lethal. And now this leaves double deny open. I will not hold back. Whew! Alright, I think we got there. Conflict is all in the mind. What are we worried about our opponent playing? Two unknowns, all of which are nightfall cards. Um. Okay, we will swing like this. We'll pull this over here. Um, I don't think there's a nightfall that stops us from killing this. So yeah, we'll do that. Okay, there we go, and that's game. Um, we were basically worried about unspeakable horror there to gain health. Um. Uh, he needed double, I think, to live through that attack, which was the goal. But, uh, yeah, that's what we're really, really worried about. If he had found Unspeakable Horror, he was in good shape there. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take that. Not a bad start. Alright, game number two here, and it's against Demacian Noxus Aggro. Interesting. I've seen this deck spiking lately, and aggro decks tend to be pretty bad for us, so that's the big concern here. Um... Man. Uh, it's hard to pitch either Diana or Lisa in here. Hmm. Because Diana is pretty good into aggro. Alright. We'll do this. I mean, we have some good cards here. It might be too slow against what our opponent tries to do, though. That's the real question. If we can pull a gift giver off the top, we'll be in much better shape, but uh, still not ideal. Especially if our opponent has a fast hand, which they should. That was actually the best draw I could have. In all honesty, that was the best draw I could have. I fight with my spirit, not my fists. Burn away the shadows. Alright. Now here's the question. Can I go for this Zenith Blade on Eye of the Dragon? Uh, I think we're going to try for it. See what our opponent has. If they've got this single combat. Nope. Okay. Perfect. That's ideal. Now I can Guiding Touch to get a Dragonling next turn. Which is definitely tempting. Otherwise, I could play this Diana with Nightfall and pull uh, Lucian, which will kind of get blown out by a Ranger's Resolve, but... Okay, well, he could still have the Ranger's Resolve, but we are going to try this. Unfortunately, this does mean we're not attacking with Eye of the Dragon this turn. But we will try to kill this Lucian. Does he have... Okay. I had a feeling this deck probably doesn't play Ranger's Resolve, but there's no guarantee that they do not. I think ideally we just want to play Lee Sin this turn. And set up for the Zenith Blade next, next turn on it. Because we are kind of looking to combo out quickly here. If he swings with Draven, we're just going to take the damage. We'll see what else he plays, though. That's the real question. My patience wanes. Because we can always Zenith Blade Eye of the Dragon again. And it's going to be extraordinarily hard for our opponent Push to kill it. 
Hmm. Because, I mean, Eye of the Dragon is one of our better cards against aggro. I think we are just going to run out this Lee Sin, though. And we'll, t we'll take the full 6 damage hit if they swing. I don't think they pump anything here, but you never know. We know that he can, for at least 0 mana, pump one of them to 4. Alright, yeah, we'll take the 3. That is not a particularly threatening amount of damage. And then we will Zenith Blade. I will not hold back. Let's see what our opponent's got. Okay. So I guess we are going for Draven then. Your spirit. Yeah, I guess we go for Draven. See what he does. Badger Bear, interesting, interesting. Um, so if I heal myself, he can't actually kill Lee. Okay. Because I'll have barrier. And he can't do double combat. I'll see this through. And we get a Dragonling this turn. What is when he Ooh, Gift Giver is strong. I'll defend these forests to the end. Now we have to think. I will not hold back. I think we're just on the save Lee Sin plan here. Their pride will cost them. Now, are we on the save Eye of the Dragon plan? Um, that I am not so sure of. Since we have this second one. Our enemies would be foolish to underestimate. Protect and strike. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Well, we can't save that one. That one is dead. Okay. Alright, never mind. We're good. <laughs> We're all good. Um, yeah, so we will block here. And we don't need this Diana anymore. So I guess we will just do... This? Don't think our opponent can kill him. Bill Cascade is pretty good. Because even if he has single combat and he fights, Lee Sin will kill whatever fights it, and I'll break the barrier, and then he lives through Genevieve because of where his health is. And now we will make a Dragon Link next turn, unless they have single combat to kill Eye of the Dragon. Uh, that is decent. The journey is difficult. Now we're trying to level him up, and now we can in fact level him up. Now the question is, can we kill our opponent? One mana, two mana, three mana, four mana... Yeah, I mean, I think that's lethal, assuming our opponent has nothing. I don't know what they could have. I suppose Noxie and Guillotine, if they fire it right now? Because I think he's only taken what? Oh no, he has taken more than... Hmm. Yeah, we just have to hope their deck doesn't run Noxie and Guillotine. <laughs> that's, that's just all there is to it. 
Okay, we will heal. Um, now that's the question. If I do two... No, I have to cast multiple spells here. So we will grab that with that. And we will go like this. Yeah, I think we just have to hope our opponent doesn't have Noxian Guillotine. I think that's all there is to it. Choose the right time to strike. Center your spear. Yeah, because that is lethal there. So our opponent has to block. See what he goes for. Hmm. How scared are we of Noxian Guillotine? Now we're just gonna go for this. See if he has it. I don't think there's anything else he could have that gets him out of here. Alright, there we go. And that's another game. Perfect. Yep, Lee Sin combo is a bit disgusting. I kept his Lucian alive. That's cool. Alright, well, there you go. Not a, not a bad start with the 2-0. Some definitely uh, sketchy games, but that's kind of how this deck works. Alright, game number three here, and this looks like Nightfall Aggro. Interesting. Um, I don't know if I've actually played this matchup yet. Seems like a pretty bad one, to be honest. I think we will, in a weird way, we're going to keep this Claws of the Dragon, we're going to keep Guiding Touch. Because I think this is a matchup where honestly playing turn 2 Claws of the Dragon by actually paying the mana might be good enough. Hush might save us, but uh, usually does not work against Nightfall Aggro. Uh, but it could hit Nocturne on the Nocturne turn, and that could be a big difference maker for us. See what our opponent has for their turn one play. If they have a turn one play. They obviously have something because they're thinking pretty long and hard about it. Um, Alright, well, no, we'll hit them. I wonder if they have the Fearsome Bird and they were considering playing it out to trade, but that would be a bad play for our opponent. Their deck is not looking to trade. They're not looking to play fair in any way. Mm, deny is pretty bad. Uh, that is interesting. Well, I guess we don't play Claws of the Dragon, because we aren't really willing to trade with that. That's a bit rough. What do we got? Ooh, that's a good one. That is exactly what we'd like to hear. Written in stars? Now, do we take the Written in Stars? Because the Golden Sisters is also very good because of the life steal. But at the same point, eventually we have to win this game. Alright. Alright, we will go for the win condition. Okay. I assume he's going to... Okay, nope. He is not going to play it. Alright. Yeah, I mean... That's where we're at. I think we might just written in stars plus fail cascade to trade. I don't think that's actually good. Uh, I think we just take the five. Ooh, that's not the one we wanted. All right. I mean, Diana's not awful. I mean, this is an answer to Crescent Guardian, I suppose. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Never mind. We're good. We're good. No problem. Well, there is our Slurry Priestess. <clears throat> the copy of it. Okay. So next turn. Next turn. And this is why Diana is actually not bad in the deck because hitting it with Written and Stars isn't necessarily bad. Um, next turn, I'm going to gem this Gift Giver. Then play Diana, which will trigger Nightfall for her. And then I can use Pale Cascade on her if I need to. To save her from anything. Um, 
probably won't need to, but... Okay. Actually, in this case, we will play Gift Giver. Even better. Because we'd rather use our gems on Diana, although it's possibly good to use these gems on one of these to push its power up to three so it can block Fearsome. There's a lot of lot of different ways we could play this that could be good. Ideally, though, this Crescent Guardian has to die this turn. So... I don't think they can kill Diana, because their deck is pretty removal light. And at least on the bright side, everything they've played so far can be blocked by a Gift Giver. I mean, it's not that great against a Crescent Guardian, sure, but... And we can always uh, hush the Crescent Guardians, if nothing else. My patience wanes. Alright, well, no we'll try to kill lies. it. Alright. That's where we're at. See what he's got. Like, double Pale Cascade. That would actually be so good for us. If he spends all of that to try and save his Crescent Guardians, we are in phenomenal shape. Um, I think that is something we actually deny. I think this is the very rare circumstance in which deny is good in this matchup. That much mana invested into it, that much potential damage, I think that's actually as great a thing as we could possibly hope for. Zenith Blade is what we really want. What's Nocturne? Is Nocturne... No, he's four. Okay. Let's see what he's got. The light of my star warms the heavens. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. So we will these gems pump Diana. We will pump one of these. Get our Claws of the Dragon and we're good. Because if he swings like this, we kill both of them. If he swings with a life stealer, we we kill that with claws. And I mean, we could just kill this life stealer next turn with our uh, quick attack potentially. Um, or honestly, do I just want to kill this now? You know what? I think this elusive will be a big problem for us if we don't deal with it. So I think this is something we hush and we take the trade here. Actually, kind of close to leveling this Lee Sin, too. That was a bit of an interesting play, but I th think overall it was worth it. Um, yeah, I guess we just swing with Diana here. Alright. We're okay with that. Bright side is neither Diana or Nocturne are close to leveling for our opponent. Um, do we bounce that? We might, actually. Ooh, that's the Zenith Blade. Hmm. Huh. I think we'll do this. And we'll just pass. Okay. Why wouldn't he... I mean, I guess I sort of see the order there. I think I would have gone... I think I would have gone for the other the other play. For the Nightfall Nocturne to... Very weird. Very weird how our opponent is playing. Oh, wait. Hang on. We gotta think about this now. Yeah, I guess we don't need to Zenith Blade this turn. Ooh, this is definitely where we take golden scissors. 
as good as they were for our opponent potentially, they are even better for us. Hmm. Cloaked in silver light. Find your path in the dark. That is solid. Oh, is he gonna try to challenge? Is that what's happening here? Wow, how many does he have? So our Diana's dead here, right? Or can we actually... Okay, so Diana's dead here. We're just accepting that and moving on. Because what we can do here will be so much more devastating that it does not matter. Because we are going to pump her. Block here. Then we... Bounce that to hand. We block this here, we block the there. And we take four damage. Sunwet. So we kill kill a little nocturne before he leveled up. He was pretty close to leveling up. I think we're probably just running these Golden Sisters out. Although I suppose we can Golden Sisters plus Diana? Ooh, or are we just Lee Sinning? Can Lee Sin kill this turn? I don't think he actually can, right? But I suppose he can do a lot of good. Alright, we'll try it. We'll try it. The dragon spirit awaken. Cause he can kill something. So if we play these two. Okay. Oh, cause it'll pull it'll play the silver sister. Okay. Not sure why he would run it out that quick then. Fight with my spirit, not my fists. Our enemies would be foolish to underestimate you. Night flowers upon you. Okay. The promise of a new moon upon you, Bloom Tender. Cloaked in silver, the moon is our queen. The night, her kingdom! So let's think about this. We have to kill Diana. I will not hold back. My lands need me. No more lies. So let's kill this, and we have to kill Diana. I will be heard. Mm, we have to kill this more than Diana. Your Face your heretic. Okay. That's optimal. I think we do play gift giver here. These jewels are more than mere trinkets. Let's see what our opponent does. I think we do have to play Golden Sisters. Actually, we are in pretty decent shape now. That was one of our better draws as well. And here's where I'd paint my constellation. I don't think we can actually play this now. Not yet. Because we don't know what our opponent pulled. Okay. I can still live with this. Okay, now we have to play scissors. Hope he doesn't have Equinox. He doesn't have Taunt. That is the important thing here. You are beneath me. 
Uh, this is not block the like way. that. Block like that. We block here. No block here. Block there. And we take no damage. Okay. I'm fine with that. Now, what is our opponent going to do? Nothing, apparently. Perfect. This is one of the sketchiest games I've played. <laughs> uh, scary. Now we don't get the dragon links. That's the unfortunate part here. Let's see what our opponent has. I will not hold back. Not lethal yet. What's he got? Stalking shadows, that's a good find. But is it good enough? Levitation requires concentration. I don't think my opponent can kill me. Um, okay. Now the question is can I kill my opponent? So that'll do eight, nine, ten. Yes, that's what he's going for here. Yeah, he's playing smart so far. I'll see this through. Celestial power. Drop him to seven. Now we just have to live one more turn. I cast Zenith Blade there because we want to get the Dragon Ling next turn. Uh, good chance we're going to need the life gain. Breathe in, breathe out. We don't know what our opponent has. Ooh, that is perfect. That is exactly what I need. That's not something we're scared of. It's what follows that up that we're worried about. Okay, we're not worried about that either. We're not worried about that either. We will just give Challenger to something. Okay. Not worried about that yet either. We will give Challenger to something, pump this Dragonling, block one of them. The fact that he didn't kill Dragonling is super good for us here. What you got, bud? I mean, this is it. This is his turn. He already knows this. Okay, we will bounce this. We will... Give Challenger to this, I guess. Our enemies cannot hide. We will... Pump will that. And we will go like this. I will not hold back. Yeah. And we currently go up four, rather than losing anything. Yep, and that should be the game. We have lethal on board. And I can even use this Bastion to, uh, to Lee Sin kick. Yep, he drains us, but that is not lethal. What is gained when you return malevolence? All right, we will Conflict Bastion it up. Prepare yourself. Yep, and there it is. All right. Well, three O so far, not bad, and that feels like it should have been one of our worst matchups, but uh, it was uh close, but honestly, didn't feel nearly as bad as I expected. We will take that for sure, though. All right. Well, looks like a Leeson combo deck, but uh. 
One that's going to be trying to be a little more aggro, I guess? Hard to say. That's a really, really weird combo they've got going there. You know, Bastion isn't terrible in this matchup, but that said, I think we want to pitch that and see if we can find something better. We're really hoping for, like, the... Yeah, that. Exactly that. I was just about to say the turn one gift giver. The journey is difficult. All right, ask and you shall receive, I guess. This deck feels ten times better when you can get that turn one play. Hmm, now I don't know what we're doing next turn. Because Mentor of the Stones is a great turn three as well. Especially if our opponent doesn't do anything. Well, they did something, but this is something we're worried about. Not yet. Speed. The question is, would we even play the Lee Sin, or would we just swing with Mentor right off the rip? Um, I think we play the Lee Sin first. What could they possibly do to mess this play up? Beware the dragon spirit. Yes, will Lionia? Which, I mean, their deck is probably running Will of Ionia, if we are completely honest. I would be, if I were them. So, I'm just going to kind of assume that they are. And, yeah, I mean, we might as well go to kill this. Yeah, we're fine with that. We're also fine with that. I mean, yeah, he'll draw more cards off this, but... Um, do we have to use the gem now? Not really. Do we want to use the gem now, just to get another creature out? Mm, that is a compelling argument. <laughs> that is, in fact, a compelling argument. Alright, we'll see what our opponent has this turn. That is not bad. I mean, we are building quite a crazy lease in here. Okay, now do we want to... I don't... I think so. I think we just play Solari Priestess. Um, hmm. I mean, this does kill Lee Sin. So I guess we, we'll take that. What does he have to give it Challenger? That's the question. Leaving this Guiding Touch up is also pretty good for us. In case he has enough damage to actually threaten this Lee Sin, but I don't think he should. He is caught up with us in spells, though. I mean, Retreat Return is pretty good in the deck. I was going to put it in the flex spots, but I don't think it's really a card you run in our variant. Okay, so this is a lot of spell combo. So he's, his, his hand is full of things. That's impressive. Um, I can't do anything about that, can I? Wow. All right. Props to our opponent. Dragon. I didn't expect the might plus uh healing potion. No, well, we will just try to kill this. See if he has the deny. He does. We might actually lose this game now. That's the crazy part. Their opponent is at five spells. They have Lee Sin, we don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what we do from here. This is pretty rough. I guess we will draw a card. 
Okay, that is one of the better draws. Although it does not save us from the current board state. Because if he can level this Lee Sim, we're just kind of doomed. We really need that Lee Sin to live. That was uh, shocking that he was able to do as much damage as he did that turn. Prepare <laughs> yourself. Yeah. I mean, all right, bud. Yeah, I mean that's not worth fighting for. It really is not. Guess we'll just draw another card. Okay. That could work. That changes things. That could work. Okay. So... This is going to be a close game. This is going to be a very, very sketchy close game. Sapphire, gem of our divine patron. Night descends. Grasping claws. I think we do have to go for this, right? I mean, if he casts most multiple spells. He can give it barrier. I yeah. I guess barrier would kill our Diana, and we can't Free lose Diana at this point. Too late for you. We are fine with this currently. See what our opponent does. This deck is not easy to pilot, so sorry about the radio silence a lot. We are definitely playing some 2D chess, or 4D chess right now to figure out what our opponent is doing. And what's the best way to deal with it. So we lose one. I think that's okay. A wise retreat. Not great, but that is okay. Conflict is all in the mind. Might just be trying to set up a, a Diana win here will. and just hoping. We burned what? One deny of his, so he's got two more. That's the big card we're worried about. I mean, he is almost certainly running Will of Ionia because of the variant he's playing. So that is a real concern that we have to worry about. Uh, not to mention he could just, like, wombo combo us one turn with, like, Katarina, if he can flip her. Okay. Conflict is all in that the alone line. isn't scary. And the good news here is that we also have, uh, deep meditations Send and a ton of mana. Spirit. And the Shadow Assassins are not doing much damage yet. Dragon speaks uh, <laughs> excuse me? Alright, well, we are going to give her Overwhelm. Prepare yourself. Okay, so that will bounce her. We'll throw that in front of... If I bounce him, she's fine. So that's what we're gonna go for. Conflict is all in the mind. Uh ouch. <laughs> that is that is an ouch. I don't know that we can really combo kill our opponent next turn, but we are gonna have to.
Yeah, this is just looking. This is just looking unfortunate for us. Not much we can do, but that could help. Um our light grows brighter. We'll keep going for this. <laughs> Try to blind me with resplendence, but they could not break me. Okay, well I mean we will uh, oh, she doesn't have Challenger yet? That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, attack like that. I won't be the thing. Uh, how much do we care about that? I don't think we actually do. I think that's something we're fine with. Her getting stunned is not that bad for us. We'll play Eye of the Dragon. Bank the rest. Because I have a feeling we are going to need a fair bit of mana next turn. I will make you proud, Master. Okay. Breathe in, breathe out. Uh, this is it. That is a great card off the top. That is a phenomenal card off the top. I will not hold back. Okay, he is going to swing there. Got it. Okay. Alright. Let's think about this. So, we have to... Deny this. This has to happen. For sure. We want this to go here. We want... You to go here. You act, but do not see. Then we hush that. Throw her in front the of that. Us. And then that has us alive and keeping most of our stuff. Okay. So we will do this again. If he has overwhelm now, though, we lose. I'll see this uh, yeah, that's game, right? Yep. All right. Well, our opponent's deck combos off faster than we do, unfortunately, and uh, they had the perfect combo to kill our lease in that turn, which we didn't we didn't respect. So, if he did fear. not kill lease in that turn, we win that game and we win it easily. But unfortunately for us, he had the perfect combo of one cost spells to make that happen so there was just nothing we could do at that point um all right well we know that now so we'll have to respect that in the future but definitely a worse version of the deck i would not really recommend it he had to get pretty lucky for that so he drew a bunch of cards off of all his shadow assassins all three of them and he had exactly the one cost spells he needed at the right time so is what it is we'll get him next time Alright, game five, and it looks like a rematch against Nightfall Aggro. So this ought to be a bit sketchy, but we will see what we can do here. That is a pretty good hand against what our opponent is going to be looking to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't think I could pitch any of that. We've got healing here, we've got healing here, we've got a turn one play, and Diana can kill things for us out of nowhere. Although, she's not really set to do that with our current hand, but, well, not until turn four, which is a bit slow for what we're looking to do. I will 100% trade here if he offers it. Yeah. Now, the elusive is a little bit sad for us if that's what he, what ends up happening here. Um, do I just swing? Yeah, I think so. Like I said, I'll take this trade. So, offering it to my opponent, I'm fine with that. I want to see what he does this turn before I decide anything else. Because we don't actually need to land this Eye of the Dragon right now because it doesn't do anything. 
We don't have enough spells to trigger it. Or, well, we can't cast enough spells to trigger it, so I'm totally fine just playing Gift Giver and banking a mana. Alright. No, like I said, I'm fine doing this. Okay. Soldier's a little little scary, but not that much. I think we'll probably use Guiding Touch just to trigger Diana. Ooh. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean Devotion to battle. I will be Hell Cascade. Yep. Well, that's unfortunate, but whatever. The Diana dies next turn, so We really, really wanted that uh Eye of the Dragon to live, but was not meant to be. Ooh, there's Lee Sin though. That'll be good eventually. See what my opponent does. Okay. Well, now we are going to gem Diana and to kill their Diana. My patience wanes. Sapphire, gem of our divine patron. Face your heretic! Because now if he has another Pale Cascade, which is unlikely, but still possible, he would still die. And that is the important part. Alright, let's see what our opponent does. We want to play this Lee Sin this turn, but... If our opponent plays something super bad for us, super aggressive, we might have to Will of Ionia. Though at this health, maybe we can take that risk. We can play Nocturne. No, we're we're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna go for it. If he plays Nocturne, gives vulnerable here, and then tries to kill Lee Sin with Nocturne, we do have Gem plus Pale Cascade to give him Barrier, and also pump him. So that's the real question our opponent has to figure out. The enemy quivers with fear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Yep. I've seen this movie. Oh, this could actually be kind of a blowout for our opponent if, uh, depending on how they attack. Let's see where he pulls this. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now here's the question. Do we kill the Nocturne? I think the answer is yes. I think Nocturne is so scary that we just have to go for that. Oh! Okay, well, that's a, that's a card in half. Oh, we'll see if he has a... I mean, so worst case scenario for us here is actually Unspeakable Horror, target Lee Sin. Rip the barrier away, hit him for three, then he's down to one health. Then if I try to Zenith Blade, he could potentially kill Lee Sin in response. Yeah, see, this is this is the worst case scenario. So what we would love to draw here is Guiding Touch off the top. Yeah, I think I just have to go for this and hope they don't have the other unspeakable horror. Because I'm in bad shape regardless. And it's not like he's going to have a better chance of surviving if I wait longer. So I just have to fire this and hope he doesn't have the answer yet. Okay. That is not the answer. Oh, he went for... Yeah, no. This game's over. Yep. Well... That's unfortunate, but here we are. That, uh, 
pretty much means that this game is done. We're running out of cards, and these denies are pretty bad in this matchup. Yeah. Yeah, no, this game is... This game is done. This game's over. I mean, I've won a lot of games with this deck out of nowhere like this, but... Yeah, this is... This is just unfortunate. Our opponent had everything. They had all the nuts. They had every card they needed. Oh, and then we draw the Bastion, of course. <laughs> yep. Yep. I mean, so we need to pull Lee Sin off the top, like, right now. Or a Solari Priestess grabbing Written in Stars. That could work, too. The journey is difficult. Will you. Yep, sure. You got it, bud. I assume this is to play a Crescent Guardian? Ah, Stygian Onlooker. Okay. I mean, I can take a certain amount of hit here, but it's very possible with 5 mana and a full grip that my opponent just kills me here. Weird that he wouldn't Dust Petal Dust. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess he might as well hold the Dust Petal Dust. So, this is a... Uh, 2, 4, 8, 9, and then 12. Protector, shield me. Block here, bounce that. Preserves the most blocks going into the future. Alright. Leeson off the top. That is not a Leeson. That is not by any circumstances a Leeson. Guiding touch isn't awful. What do we find? Still not a Leeson. Yeah, I mean, we'll play this, I guess. 22 cards left. See what our opponent has. Yep, that is one of the scariest draws they could have. If I swing with both of these right now, he just trades and trades, and then I die to the swing back. I mean, we probably die to this anyways, but... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. One turn too late. And we'll see if we get to play it. This is not looking good for us, though. Okay. I fight with the dragon's fury. Nocturne is not leveled Only up yet. I mean, if we can go nuts off this Pale Cascade, that is all there is to it. If we can go nuts off this Pale Cascade. Seems extraordinarily unlikely, especially with everything he has having, uh, having Fearsome. And that is the game. Our opponent had it. And we did not. If they didn't have Unspeakable Horror, we had him there, but... Sometimes you get unlucky. And that's going to leave us with the 3 and 2. A little disappointing. Um, we'll talk more about it in the wrap-up. I think this deck is a lot better than it is, but... Uh, a lot better than we showed anyways, but... Definitely unlucky. Uh, aggro has really come back in full swing, and that is where this deck struggles a little bit more. So I think we'd be a little bit better off running some of the life gain additions, but we'll talk about that more in the more in the wrap up. All right, so let's review how we did. We went three and two in our matchups, which is a running record. But uh, in Masters right now with the deck, I am three and four on the list, so it is just under fifty percent. And in total playing this deck in ranked, I am 16 and 12, which is a 57% win rate. But 
I think going forward, when I play more of this deck, I'm probably going to run the version that runs some more life gain, whether that's Tasty Fae Folk or maybe Spirit's Refuge. I, I think I'll probably go Fae Folk. I might cut the Dianas for Fae Folk, because that's basically what it comes down to. Because right now there are too many people playing aggro, whether it's Nightfall aggro, or it's MFGP Pirate aggro, or something like Endure. It's just a lot of aggro decks, so right now the life gain is just better. Diana's really good into kind of mid-rangey decks, and... Well, mid-rangey combo decks and control decks, that's where Diana really shines. Um, specifically, what she, was, what she was best at was against ramp decks, because you could use it to use her to kill Weirding Stones pretty easily. So that's where she's shown the most. I think, though, she's the easiest cut to make for Tasty Fae Folk, so going forward in rank, I'm probably going to cut her for the Fae Folk, at least for the, for the short term, while people are jamming so many burn slash aggro decks, so... I think that's one important change to make right off the bat, um, especially if you play something like uh, Zenith Blade on her on uh, on the uh, Tasty Fae Folk. That's really incredibly good against burn decks because you can basically build your own Radiant Guardian fairly easily with that card. So I think that's a really strong advantage to it, um, and it's probably better than Spirit's Refuge because Spirit's Refuge has its own problems, if you want to call it that. Uh, Spirit's Refuge does have the nice added benefit of Spirit's Refuging Ali Sin means a ton of healing if you can get the full combo, but I think there's some places where that's not necessarily great, but I'll probably mess around with the two different cards and bounce between the two of them, seeing whether... Because Lee Sin does stabilize decently in the early game, and so then just becomes how the late game goes. So gaining a bunch of life off of a Lee Sin might be enough to just buy yourself some time, because that's just what it comes down to, is that right now my variant of the deck doesn't buy you enough time in the current meta. If we see Ramp come back or like Celestials come back and be pretty big in the meta, then this version works extraordinarily well against that since you can deal with a lot of their threats as they come down using Diana, and she is kind of a big threat on her own into a lot of the right matchups because of the fact that, like, all you need is one Zenith Blade, and she really goes nuts, and the fact that she gives you extra Pale Cascades makes it even easier to combo off with Lee. Um, yeah, I think that's the big thing to take from this, is our aggro matchups are not great, and the Katarina Lee Sin deck, I think... I think that was just unlucky, but that does tend to be a slightly, from what we saw of it, it, it's a slightly faster deck for comboing off, since they seem to be using most, if not all, of the one-drop burst spells they could find, um, particularly the one that give Overwhelm and all that, so their Lee Sin, while they don't have Zenith Blade to give them multiple Overwhelm attacks, instead they have Might, they have... Uh, just, uh, I, I would not be terribly, I would not be terribly surprised if they ran Kato the Arm in that build, to be honest. I think it's probably worth it. They do have all these ways to get Might in and of itself, and Might will give you, or give you Overwhelm, and Might will give you power in addition to that, all at burst speed, so that's incredibly hard to deal with, so I think we just got a little bit unlucky, and our opponent's deck is kind of built to combo off incredibly quickly, but we actually would have beaten him to the races if he couldn't have killed Lee Sin that exact turn. Because if he doesn't have it that turn, we just take over from that point on. Um, I think the Lucian Draven matchup was a great example of what this variant of the deck is just super good at dealing with, because... Lucian can be scary on his own, but Diana's great against that, and she's also kind of good into Banner Scouts for similar reasons, that she can kill priority targets pretty easily. Um, and then War Mother was pretty pretty easy, too. Um, those matchups are, yeah, they're, they're pretty free wins for the most part with this deck. Um, it's just aggro. Aggro gives us problems, which Banner Scouts is one of those things, so that's part of the reason for running the Diana is that Banner Scouts is a pretty bad matchup for us, and, well, Banner Scouts, Bannermen, those could be very troubling, and then MFGP is hard to say. I've lost against it more recently, 
but my heads up matchup against the deck is actually still positive. It's like three to one, four to one, something like that. It's just the most recent time I ran into it, I lost to it, and it just kind of spiked in the meta, so it's possible that the lists I went up against before weren't perfectly optimized, so I'm a little hesitant about it, because it feels like a matchup that should be bad, but we have done well against it in the past. So, it's hard to say with that one. But we saw we saw the good sides of the matchup, and then we saw the bad sides of the matchup. Nightfall aggro seems pretty rough. Um... We got a little bit lucky in the game we won, and our opponent definitely got lucky in the game we lost, but I think we can kind of expect their deck to match up well against us most times. So, yeah, the, bi the, the big takeaway from here is that if we move back towards stuff like DN Aggro and Banner Scouts and Celestials... I think this version is your best go-to, which is what was the predominant thing I was facing when I was climbing with the deck originally. But I think right now in the aggro heavy meta, you want to go either Tasty Fae Folk or Spirit's Refuge, something like that. I still stand by Gift Giver over Spacey Sketcher. I'm going to try them... I'm going to try both variants. I'm going to try all the variants, to be honest. This deck's just really, really fun because you do win games out of nowhere when it really, really feels doomed. The Nightfall game kind of demonstrated that when we did win it. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> the Ionian Noxus uh, Lee Sin deck kind of showed the opposite side of it from our opponent because we were doing incredibly well and getting a super fast Lee Sin, and then he won out of nowhere, essentially, by killing it. But... Yeah, this is one of those decks that's just incredibly fun to play because you really never can count yourself out. There's a number of live draws that could get you there. Like the Nightfall aggro game we lost, there was a number of draws we could have pulled that would have actually worked fine to keep us alive in that game. Like if, if we had really gone off and started pulling like guiding touch off of it for example or another pale cascade to pump one of our other creatures to block one of the big ones like there was a number of plays that could have happened but unfortunately we didn't have quite enough so i highly recommend this deck if you're looking for a very fun combo deck that's pretty unique but i would say probably right now take the life gain go that route but definitely give the deck a look if you are a fan of combo decks. I think this is kind of in some ways taking the place of some of the faster Ezreal decks in the meta. Since the nerf kind of hit him pretty hard. But this is basically, I think, the best combo deck we have at the moment. So one that's definitely worth a look if that's your preferred style of play. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment below, and subscribe for more videos just like it.